In this video, we will learn how hexadecimal numbers work, these weird strings that look like a mix of numbers and sometimes letters, what they're used for, how to convert them to their decimal equivalent, and how to convert back from decimal to hexadecimal. Now, if you have ever encountered hexadecimal numbers before outside of a programming context, it has probably been in something like this, a color picker, where you can select or enter RGB, red, green, and blue values for the color of each pixel, where each number here is between zero and 255. But then you can also select or enter a hex value for the color, which is this six digit string that can consist of either numbers or letters. And that is what we're going to explain in this video. Now, to lay the groundwork here, I want you to forget about hexadecimal numbers for a minute, and we are just going to talk about the good old-fashioned decimal, or base 10, number system that you've been using since you were a kid. But we are going to talk about it in a manner that you probably haven't thought about since you were first learning this in grade school, and that is going to set us up for understanding how hexadecimal numbers work. So. You may remember from way back in first or second grade or whenever, referring to the different digits of a number as the ones, tens, and hundreds places. And we could go on to the thousands and so on, but we're just gonna keep it to say a simple number, 317 as our example. And that each digit of this number represents how many of that unit we have. So I could write that as this is the ones place, this is the tens place, or this is the hundreds place. But I could also, you may notice a pattern there, represent these as powers of 10. So this first digit, one is 10 to the zero. This next digit, tens, is 10 to the one. This next digit, hundreds, is 10 squared, and so on. So as sort of an aside there, really exponents are probably a topic for a different video, but a number to an exponent means how many times you multiply that number by itself. So, whoops, 10 squared means 10 times 10, which equals 100. And you might think, oh, 10 to the zero should be zero. 10 to the zero is actually one. That's kind of, again, a weird topic for a different video. Anything to the zero is equal one, so equal to one. So there we have each digit here represents a power of 10. And to find the total value of this number, we multiply each digit by its respective power of 10. So if we add up three times 10 squared plus one times 10 to the first plus seven times 10 to the zero, well, that's gonna be three times 100, which is 300, plus one times 10, which is 10, plus seven times one, which is seven. So 300 plus 10 plus seven is 317. And we just have what we started with. And you might think, okay, well, great. That was kind of obvious and redundant. Why did we bother doing that? And we did that because the hexadecimal number system works exactly the same way, except it is a base 16 number system instead of base 10. So instead of powers of 10, our digits are going to represent powers of 16. So we have 16 to the zero, 16 to the one, 16 squared, and so on. If I added another digit, it would be 16 cubed. So if I write 317 in hexadecimal, and I wanna convert that to the equivalent decimal value, I'm gonna do that calculation again by multiplying each digit times its respective power of 16. So this is gonna be three times 16 squared plus one times 16 to the one plus seven times 16 to the zero. And if I punch that into my calculator, I get 768 plus 16 plus seven equals 791. So that is my decimal or base 10 equivalent of the hexadecimal number 317. And that might make you wonder, okay, well, if I just see the number 317 written down somewhere, well, how do I know if it's decimal or hexadecimal? And normally in everyday life, we just assume everything is in the base 10 or decimal system because that's what we use most of the time. 
But then in mathematics or programming, we might need a way to specify which number system we're using. So depending on the programming language or the textbook you're looking at, there may be different conventions for doing that. In programming, it is common in many languages to put a leading 0x in front of a hexadecimal number to indicate that it is decimal. That's opposed to a 0b for binary, which I have a different video on my channel covering binary numbers, which again is the same concept except it's base 2 instead of 16. Some textbooks will also use a subscript after the number, for example, a base 10 uh, that zero looked a lot like a 16, or a base 16 to indicate the base of the number system. So again, depends on the, on the context. This is a little more common in programming. This might be a little more common in mathematics textbooks. Now you're probably thinking, wait a minute, you haven't explained the letters yet. So don't worry, we're getting there. The other thing we didn't mention here is that if we go back over to the decimal system, I'm gonna switch back to a different color, each digit in this system can be a number between zero and nine, or between and including zero and nine. So since we're starting at zero, there are 10 possible values for this base 10 system. And that means if this is a base 16 system, there need to be 16 possible values. So that would go from zero to 15. But the problem is in our writing system, we don't have unique digits to represent the numbers 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Maybe I could use Greek letters or some other symbol, but I want, I want a single digit. I don't wanna write the number 10 here because then that's gonna get confusing because it looks like two digits. So someone at some point just decided to use letters to represent these numbers. So that is where the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F come in, and there is no G in hexadecimal or anything higher because the biggest value any one digit can have is 15. A digit cannot have the value 16 because again, we start counting at zero and there are 16 possible values. So that is why, for example, so if I kind of wall this off and write in another example down here, if instead of 317, I had say 3AF, the process to convert that to decimal is still the same. I'm just gonna multiply each digit by its respective power of 16, but I just need to use this table to look up the decimal equivalent value for each letter. So this is still gonna be three times 16 squared, but then I'm gonna have A, which has a value of 10, times 16 to the one, plus F, which has a value of 15, times 16 to the zero. And if I punch that into my calculator, I'm gonna get 943. So the nice thing about this, after you get over that initial hump of confusion about the letters, is that this, since it's a base 16 system, it allows me to represent larger numbers more compactly using fewer digits especially when compared to binary. So for example, a single byte or eight bits of binary, I can represent as eight zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to eight ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's gonna be equivalent to the decimal range, zero up to 255. But in hex, I can represent that with just two digits. That's gonna be 0x00 up to 0xff. So I've represented that entire byte or eight bits of binary with just two digits in hexadecimal. So sometimes we're looking at something like say a microcontroller data sheet, especially for 16 bit values where I would have 16 ones or zeros written out there. I could represent that with just four digits of hex, so it's a lot more compact. Similar to what we saw with the color wheel example earlier that had six characters. So in hex, we had six digits, but then that would just be absurdly wrong long if you were, had to write it out in binary. So maybe not as intuitive because we've got letters mixed in with numbers, but it allows us to represent those bigger values in a more compact form.
Now, after all that, you might be wondering, okay, what if I have a decimal value and I want to convert it to hex? So you could just Google it, but if you want to do it by hand, let's say I have 7,562 base 10, and I would like to convert that to the equivalent hex value. And here is the algorithm for doing that. We are going to sequentially or repeatedly divide this number by 16, then take the remainder and convert the remainder to the equivalent hex digit. So for example, starting with 7,562, if I divide that by 16, I'm gonna get a quotient of 472 with a remainder of 10. And then the hex value of that remainder, 10, is going to be A. Okay, I'm then going to take my quotient, divide it by 16 again. So 472 divided by 16 equals 29, remainder 8. The hex value of 8 is just 8. Okay, now I'm going to do 29. Let me keep going. Divided by 16 gives me a quotient of 1 with a remainder of 13. The hex value of 13 is D. And then finally, I'm gonna have my last quotient, one divided by 16. That gives me a quotient of zero with a remainder of one, which again, just has a hex value of one. And now these remainder hex values are in reverse order. So this is digit zero, one, two, three counting from the right. So to write that out in hex, it would be 1D8A. There we go. I have converted my original decimal value to hex. And if I wanted to convert this back to the decimal value, I could follow the process I did on the previous slide, multiplying each digit by the corresponding powers of 16, adding them up, and I should be able to complete the circle and get back to the equivalent decimal value. All right, hopefully you now understand how hexadecimal numbers work based on your understanding of how the base 10 number system works. And remember, there is a very similar video explaining how binary numbers work, which I will link in the description of this one. Thank you.